Hello, my lovely viewers. I hope your day or evening is fantastic. Welcome to Kate Bonnie Country, and you can call me Kate Bonnie. Thank you so much for stopping by. Come on in and have a seat. Today, we are going to try and save these mildew-covered Doc Martens and go over some basics of cleaning leather. I apologize for the background noise. It's a beautiful day outside. And I decided to sit on my front porch and record the audio. I don't think anyone will have problems hearing the birds chirping. But please forgive any traffic sounds, wind, or even sirens that you may hear. This eggplant purple pair of Doc Martens was put into storage for five to six years. And was found covered in grayish green mildew when the owner rediscovered them. You will notice that we are not in the workshop. This is due to two things. First, mildew spreads by spores. So I don't want to risk spreading the spores and infecting the hides that are in my workshop. Secondly, one of the best methods for killing mildew is exposure to ultraviolet radiation, which our sun provides plenty of. Never Use commercially available mildew cleaners on leather, as that will certainly destroy the leather fibers. In order to ensure that the spores are eradicated, we need at least 24 hours of direct sunlight exposure. Since the mildew is also inside of the boots, I decided a three-day process was called for. On the first day, I placed them on this table near the workshop. I turned them around and removed the laces on the second day. The last day saw them turned back to their original position. And I folded the tops and tongues down to expose as much of the interior as I could. That gets us to here. I didn't think I needed to film me turning the boots around each day. So when all was done... I brought them into the work area of my house right next to the AC unit to clean them. I also failed to film spraying the interior toe area with a shoe disinfectant. Since the interior toe area is lined with fabric and the sunlight cannot reach it, a shoe disinfectant with an antifungal agent must be used to kill any mildew spores and prevent reinfection. I swapped from the handheld camera to the action camera on a chest harness for the rest of this video since I need both hands to do this bit. And a static camera would not show everything that I want to highlight. The entire cleaning and polishing process took roughly one and a half hours. Watching the whole thing would be incredibly boring, so I'm only including the highlights. The first step in the cleaning process is wiping away all the loose mildew and dirt using a soft, damp cloth. Soak your cloth in distilled water and squeeze out as much of the water as you can. It needs to be damp rather than soaking wet. When cleaning leather, you want to use the least amount of water necessary to do the job. I used a microfiber dish cloth with a scrubber side. There is a slight risk that the scrubber could damage the leather, but I find it necessary to get into all of the nooks, crannies, and crevices. You can use any soft cloth. A lot of leather crafters and leather care professionals use bits of old cotton t-shirts. You know the ones I'm talking about. It seems that just as soon as you've washed that t-shirt enough to get it to the perfect level of softness, it starts to wear out. The graphics fade, the stitching breaks, and they start to get holes. Find one of those, cut out the graphics, as most inks contain plastics that can scratch the leather, and cut what is left into working sizes. If using an old t-shirt, make sure that it is 100% cotton or other plant fiber material. 
Synthetic threads, like nylon and polyester, are plastic and can scratch the leather. Now use that damp cloth to gently wipe all the leather surfaces, inside and out. That cloth went directly to my washing machine, but throwing away when you're done is also an option. The second step in the cleaning process is using soap to clean the boots. However, the type of soap you use is important. I am using the complicated method. You can use drops of original, unscented Dawn dish soap to make this easier. You will need five items. A small bowl, soap, a spray bottle of distilled water, a soft brush, and a fresh, clean, soft cloth. Same as the type you just used. I used a boar's hair shaving brush, but a soft bristles toothbrush will do. I used an unscented glycerin soap that was shaved into chips. I placed a few chips into my small bowl, spritzed a little distilled water on top, and worked up a lather with the brush. I have heard that some leather crafters will use shaving cream. But I have never tried it, since I do not know if the perfumes or other chemicals could degrade the leather. I cleaned the boots in sections. I spread the lather over the leather. Oh, that's a bit of a tongue twister, so let's just call that foam from now on. I spread the foam over the leather. I made sure to include cleaning the stitching around the edge of the sole in the process. That area of the boot is sometimes referred to as the catwalk. Finally, I wiped the phone off using a fresh, clean, damp cloth. I repeated the phone application and removal over each section. Make sure to press the foam into all the creases and crevices and thoroughly wipe it off. Don't be afraid to clean the same area multiple times if necessary. I let the boots completely dry, then came back to polish them. Since these boots were originally a deep eggplant color, it's hard to find shoe polishes that match exactly. That means I had to layer different colors of wax. I decided to use Lincoln Blue Stain Wax and Kiwi Shoe Polish in Cordovan. Cordovan is a reddish purple color, so layering with blue does adjust the hue. I began by spritzing a little distilled water on the polish puck and used a clean cloth to pick up the wax. The water helps to soften the puck and also helps the wax release from the cloth. I applied the wax using small circular motions. At this point, it is worth noting that all Doc Martens are not created equal. When fresh from the factory, they all have a thin layer of plastic-like coating over the leather to give them some shine. Some models are made from a very shiny patent leather where the coating is thicker. If these had been a patent leather model, I would have advised the owner that saving them is near impossible. Once the shiny coating on patent leather is damaged, they will just never be the same again. Luckily, this pair was not a high shine model to begin with. Even so, once the plastic layer is gone, Dark Martens will never achieve the same level of shine again. I do not know if these boots were worn until the shine was gone or if the mildew ate it away. I advise the owner that I can clean and polish them, but I cannot restore faded color. In order to do that, the boots would need to have the existing dye removed and then be re-dyed to a uniform color. That process involves harsh chemicals, a lot of soaking those chemicals back out, and then evenly applying a new dye. 
I'm willing to do that with my own shoes, but I am not confident in my skills to do it for a paying customer. Since there is always a chance the new dye will not take, or the leather might not stand up against the process. Once the wax was applied, I used a clean part of the cloth to buff the wax to a shine using small circular motions. The buffing process causes the wax to slightly melt and then reharden evenly. Light reflects off of the wax and gives a shiny appearance. I used the Lincoln Blue Stain Wax for the first layer. Then I went back and repeated the process with the Kiwi Cordovan. In total, I applied three layers of blue and five layers of cordovan. The final step is trying to restore the signature Dark Martin yellow stitching. Since we cannot use harsh cleaners or bleach to remove the dirt, our best bet is to color over them. You can use a yellow colored pencil to color each stitch, and that might be less frustrating, but I decided to go with a yellow crayon. Any crayon wax that got on the rubber part of the catwalk could easily be scraped off with my fingernail. However, I had to be careful not to get crayon on the leather parts of the boots. If I tried to scrape that off with my fingernail, I would also scrape off the polish that I just applied. I have seen people use scotch tape or masking tape to try to protect the boot leather. However, some of the polish may come off with the adhesive when you remove tape. Of course, the crayon broke twice due to the pressure of pushing the crayon wax into the fibers of the stitches, so I was left working with a nub by the time I was finished. As I mentioned earlier, a colored pencil can also be used. With colored pencils, it is less likely for the pencil to break or to get wax on the rubber part of the catwalk or on the leather. However, each stitch must be colored over several times. A colored pencil takes more time than a crayon, but might be less frustrating to work with. This is what the boots looked like when I was finished. I had no expectation that they would look brand new, and I am happy with the way they turned out. If you have any questions about the process, feel free to ask in the comments.